at stake. Yeah, it's a pretty easy shove there for Halchi with a king nine, and unfortunately for him, he's going to walk into aces. Gunderstadt makes the call. Pot is 3.7 million. And, uh, you know, I don't mind this play at all. He did have some fold equity. And at the same time, he may get called by worse hands. He does flop a king. Needs another one, though, or a nine. King or a nine on the river. Seven of hearts, no help to him. And Halchi from Slovenia is out in sixth place. $36,678 richer. Five players remain. Gunderstadt is our chip leader with 17.3 million. He's in the small blind. Flying Squiz, not going to play the ace in the cutoff seat. But D3 is going to raise the button. Gunderstadt just folds. I mean, nothing wrong with folding ace three. I mean, I'll be honest, I actually prefer a fold to a call, but I thought you might see a three bet from him. Queen six four. PC does call, though, and flops top pair. He's going to check it. Play it a little bit slow. Probably look for the check raise here. Just to touch on that one more time, here's the bet from D3. I, I don't mind folding ace three. I, I think, you know, sometimes preservation of chips, very important. I just thought, since he was the chip leader, he wouldn't give that button raise any credit. And look at this. We got fireworks here. A bet, a check raise. D3 doesn't believe him. He's going to re-raise. And PC is going to put another bet in there. And now D3 has got to fold. The check, the bet, the check raise, the re-raise from D3. And then PC puts one more raise in there. And is now up to 13 million chips. He gives away a few of them as we jump ahead to hand 50. He's now at 11.2 million. D3 in second place with 12.1 million. PC raises. We haven't seen much from Flying Squiz. He's from the UK. And he is going to pick a better spot. D3 with the suited ace. He's going to 3-bet. Maybe that's why his name is D3. For I like the 3-bet. These two players, definitely the most aggressive players at the table. There's the 4-bet. And yeah, the cards are correct. Ace-7, ace-3... And there's the shove. <laughs> Look at that. The shove five bet. I love it. Just to recap that action, PC raises the three bet with the ace three, the four bet with the ace seven, and the five bet shove from D3. Don't try that at home, kids. You can kind of see where this one's going to go. Well, okay. I didn't think Gunderstadt would do that, but you get a, a raise from Gunderstadt. I actually thought you'd get a raise here from PC, and then Flying Squiz would shovel the top. I still think you get the shovel the top from Flying Squiz. No? Really? Wow. Well, Gunderstadt flops a whole bunch of nothing, while PC Portiga has got top pair. King Queen working out well for him. PC Portigo really balancing his range. I like this game. Sometimes three betting with his premium hands. Sometimes just calling. I can see the cards, and sometimes it's tough for me to know what he has. A bet from the Dane of 1.1 million. And he's going to re-raise. PC Portiga, got, he's got this entire table going crazy. And what do you do now with your jack deuce? 
Oh, wow. Gunderstutt now down to 6.8 million. A little bit of a misstep there. And PC Portiga, our chip leader with 17.7 million. Well, it's no surprise. Our two most aggressive players at the table, PC Portiga and D3, are the chip leaders. And you know what? Going back to a hand earlier on where I saw D3 actually make a value bet with uh, King Jack on an Ace, Queen, Queen, Jack board with three diamonds. I take it back. Here's the shove from Vintenho. Pretty easy fold for Gunderstadt. And he's going to call. Tilt anyone? A little bit of tiltage. Gunderstadt was our chip leader just a couple of hands ago. Oh, he gets lucky. He spikes the ace. And Vintenho needs an eight. Well, now he needs an eight that is not a club. He needs the eight of spades specifically. That's the five of hearts. And Vintenho is now down to 2.56 million. Gunderstadt... I got to tell you, he plays two hands back-to-back -back not very well. But he gets rewarded, and he is now second in chips with $16.3 million. Going back to that hand with D3 when he did value bet against PC Portiga, I want to say maybe 12 minutes ago or so, I take it back. You know, as aggressive as PC Portiga is, maybe D3 thought he could uh, get value from the hand. Maybe he also thought he could induce a bluff. So, stand corrected. Vinton Ho... Moves all in. D3 raises. Gunderstadt re-raises over the top. Back over to D3. He's got to give the king-queen up. Here's the flop. 8-3 deuce. Vintenho. He is all in. He's at risk. Needs a king. Well, we know one king is already dead. Here's the river. It's the queen of diamonds and Vintenho is out in fifth place. He's one of two Brazilians at the final table, and he is gone. Takes home $48,140. Growing up on the circuit, everyone wanted to offer me advice. When to bet, when to fold, when to raise, what to wear, what to eat. But there was one piece of advice that took me to a new level. Daniel, don't do anything stupid. At PokerStars.com, there's a tournament starting every second. Develop your game at the world's largest poker site. So four players remain, and if you dream of being one of the final four, that's right, get into the online poker show free roll. The password? Kachalov. June 26, 2011, at 335 Eastern Standard Time. So at hand 75, this is what it looked like. Gunderstuff, or Gunderstedef is our chip leader with 23.7 million. We're going to jump ahead a couple of hands. Flying Squiz from the UK is very short stacked with 3.5 million. Blinds have jumped up to 200,000, 400,000. So Flying Squiz, well, he's got just over eight big blinds. Raise from PC Portiga. 2x, fairly standard for aggressive players. D3 going to call this time. He also balancing his range. 8-3-3, three, three. flying squiz wondering, oh, I had an 8. I should have been in there. PC Portiga. Standard C bet. And D3 not going anywhere. Probably thinks there's a good chance that his king high is good. It's an interesting turn card. PC Portiga now picks up the open-ended straight draw. He can win this with a 6, a 7, a 10, or a jack. The rest of the deck is for D3. And of course, PC Portiga can win by probably just firing one more bullet. Nope, he's going to check behind. And the river's an ace. D3 is going to check here. He, know, he knows he has some showdown value. Probably knows he can never get a better hand to fold. PC Portiga forced to bluff at it. Bet's 2 million, and it's back over to D3. And might he call? He has nut no pair. 
Para 3's Ace King Queen. I mean, I love the check from D3. Just obviously puts him in a very tough spot here. He makes the call. Great call by D3. Something I always hope that movies would do, instead of showing those, like, straight flushes against four of a kinds, I'd rather see a hand like this, where the hero makes some sick call with, like, queen high. Well, Flying Squiz has been waiting for a big hand, and this is the one. Stick them all in there, buddy. Don't think he'll get called. Well, he certain, certainly shouldn't be called. It's 2.8 million. Pot is only 4 million, and, uh... Gunder Stuff's not gonna call this, is he? He calls! Are you kidding me? Five high? That's a terrible call. Well, you know what? If you're Flying Squiz, you love it. Flying Squiz from the UK, a 2-1 to one favorite. And, uh, in pretty good shape to get a double up. Oh! It's a 5 on the turn! It's disastrous for Flying Squiz! He needs help! And it's not going to come and fly and squiz. Oh, he gets his chips in good. Gunder Studoff makes a terrible call. And fly and squiz is gone in fourth place. He earns himself $64,359. We're down to three players. And when we got three-handed, these players decided to make a deal. Still some money on the table, though. Queen, queen, eight. Gunder Stadov. With about a two to one chip advantage over both players. Bet's two and a half million. Generally speaking, if you've got an ace pre flop and you think it's good. A paired board is unlikely to have helped your opponent, so you probably think your ace is still good. PC Portiga, he thinks that, and he shoves. Stays aggressive, and he's now up to 19.9 million. I'm really curious to see how D3 plays this. I respect his game. It'll be interesting to see how he plays it in the small blind. He's going to raise... A little bump up. Gunderstuff going to call the Dane against the Canadian. It's a great flop for D3. He's flopped a full house. Continue betting. Leads out for 1.3 million. Gunderstuff going to call? A little bit optimistic. D3 going to give his opponent enough rope to hang himself. Goes check, check. And the river's an eight. If you're D3, you got to think, okay, how do I get value out of this hand? Maybe I get called by an ace high. No, nope. he's going to bet, and Gunder Stadoff is going to fold. It's a really strange way to play that hand, though, if you're Gunder Stadoff. It's one thing to call pretty flop. The flop comes out three nines, though, and your opponent leads out at you, and you're just going to call and then shut down on the turn in the river. I mean, I thought he was he was floating so he could take it away. Jack High doesn't really have any showdown value. We're raising the button from D3. PC going to 3-bet. D3 could shove here. It wouldn't shock me at all. These players are so aggressive. D3 is going to give it up. Wow. I didn't think that was... Uh, that was a possibility. Well, I'll tell you something. D3 is not folding this hand. At least not pre-flop. PC raises. D3. He's going to re-raise. He's going to 3-bet. Back over to PC. Oh, you can almost feel it coming, can't you? 